These photos are the aftermath of one of the strangest explosions that occurred in history. As you can see, hundreds of burnt trees were knocked down on the ground, all in the same direction. The location was in the middle of Siberia, near Tunguska River, and these photos were taken in 1927, but the actual explosion happened in 1908. Now, an explosion this big was assumed to have been caused by a large meteorite, but when researchers visited Ground Zero, they were baffled since there was no crater whatsoever. There are no photos available that captured the explosion, but several eyewitnesses shared their accounts of the event. The local native living in the area and other settlers described it as a bright light in the traveling down towards the forest. They said that it was first blue color with a long white tail, then as it further goes down, it changes color to reddish light. The thing was so bright and big that at the time, they believed that it was about to destroy Earth. They further said that upon closing near the surface, it made a series of loud sound, but they were not sure whether it made an impact on land. They did not see the actual explosion. One witness recalled that the sound was similar to a cannon firing, while another said that it sounds as if it was raining rocks. The shockwave that it created shattered the windows of the houses on the nearby towns, and various people were injured from flying debris. It was reported that there were three casualties, but none of these cases were confirmed. The shockwave from the explosion was equivalent to an earthquake. It registered to various seismic station across Europe and measured about 5.0 Richter magnitude scale. The aftermath created some strange sightings in the sky. Across Europe, the horizon created some orange and greenish glow. Here, in this picture, shows the areas where people reported seeing these bizarre colored skies, and these were seen both day and night times. Even though this occurred in 1908, extensive scientific investigation started 19 years later in 1927. One of the main reasons is that the area was so isolated. It would be a challenge for anyone to reach the zone since they had to take numerous transportations both on water and land. Also, Scientists were afraid to even go near it. They fear that the zone may contain harmful radiation since the whole event was so odd. To add on top of that, being it was in the middle of Siberia, the cold temperature is unforgiving, so traveling there was very risky. A Russian meteorologist, Leonid Kulik, led the first expedition to get there. His first assumption, much like most people thought at the time, that the blast was created by a giant meteorite impact. In 1921, he and his team of scientists visited a nearby area close to the explosion site to conduct unrelated research. He had a chat with the local natives, and they shared stories about the explosion that happened in 1908. After gaining some information from them, he gained a huge interest on reaching Ground Zero to further look into it also in hope to find any clues as to what exactly happened. In 1927, with enough funding for his expedition, he led a team of scientists to reach the epicenter. Since they were visiting uncharted territories, he went out to look and hire some local natives to guide them there. Unfortunately for them, the people living in the area now become reluctant to talk about the incident, since some believe that the whole event was a curse from the gods and should not be questioned by science. They said that the event happened for a reason, and it was to punish the animals and the trees living there. However, Kulik didn't believe any of that and still proceeded with his mission. He hired a few local natives who were willing to guide them there. The group traveled through the cold forest using horses and then sail on a boat on the Marikta River. As they sailed through the waters, they encountered their first clue. The trees were knocked down in the same pattern, and its branches were scorched. They used this to their advantage and followed the path to pinpoint the epicenter. When they finally reached Ground Zero, to their surprise, they didn't find a crater as they expected. Instead, they found trees that were standing upright, much like a telephone pole. Kulik found this very odd, since he was sure that a huge meteorite was the cause of the event and no trees would survive the impact. While the group was there, they scoured the area to investigate. But after five days of staying there, they were forced to go back due to a shortage of food. Also, they couldn't risk staying for a prolonged period of time because of the extreme cold temperature. Unfortunately, they didn't find any interesting fragments to indicate that it came from an asteroid. Completely nothing, 
as if something exploded and left no evidence behind. One big reason why they didn't find much clues was because it took 19 years after event for them to investigate the area, and by then, some clues may likely have been destroyed. After Kulik's initial expedition, and even though they were left empty-handed, other scientists followed suit. During the 1950s, a group of researchers conducted a more extensive examination of the zone. They discovered microscopic fears which contained high proportions of nickel relative to iron after sifting through the soil. These types of metals are found in meteorite, which they concluded that this in fact came from an extraterrestrial origin. However, if indeed that the whole explosion was caused by a meteorite, then why was there no crater impact? Just because there was a microscopic level of metals that was found, it doesn't necessarily explain what caused the explosion. Another possible clue was that strange out-of-place boulder located just a couple of miles away from the explosion site. As you can see here, the placement of the rock is quite odd, as if it was dropped from above. It looks very isolated. There was no nearby cliff to suggest that it fell from it. The rock is known as John Stone, named after the researcher, John Afneginov, who found it. Everyone thought that this was one of a few meteorite fragments, but when they took samples from it, they discovered that it may likely come from hydrothermal origin, probably related from a volcano eruption that occurred thousands of years ago. The lack of solid evidence leads many to have some wild speculations. Some believe that it was an alien spaceship who attacked an empty area as a sign of warning, while others say the explosion was a secret operation done by the military to test out a new weapon and wanted to keep the whole thing a secret. The fact that it landed in the middle of the forest where practically nobody lives makes it an ideal location. In 1973, a group of scientists theorized that a miniature black hole may have appeared before the meteor impacted on land. Even though this sounded quite far-fetched, it was considered as a possibility. An object that large wouldn't have just vanished without leaving a crater or any evidence. Of course, such a claim was hard to prove, so eventually, this was ruled out. In 2007, Italian scientists suggested that a large meteorite actually hit the area, and that the nearby lake called Lake Cecco was the crater. Since the initial investigation took almost 19 years after, they believe that during this time period, the crater turned into this lake. The large meteorite is now sitting at the bottom of the lake, waiting to be discovered, but others say that their evidence isn't compelling enough to prove this. Ten years later in 2017, this was dismissed. Scientists revealed that the lake was there way before the event happened. They used soil research to prove that the lake is 280 years old and is clearly older than the explosion incident. After many years with an array of possible causes, the science community came up with the closest explanation. There's a high possibility that the explosion was caused by an airburst. Just as the name implies, the object may likely have exploded mid-air before hitting land. Now, a similar event happened in February 15, 2013, and it was also in Russia. It quite resembles the description of the Tunguska explosion in 1908. Here you can see it showed a bluish color. Then as it travels down even further, it turned into a reddish color, and just like it was reported back then, it was as bright as the sun. Also, eyewitnesses said that there were a series of loud bangs just after the bright light vanished. This 2013 event generated a large shockwave, which damaged numerous window buildings. Even though both incidents are quite similar, there is one big difference, and that is the lack of evidence the 1908 blast left behind. The one in 2013 showered thousands of fragments, some were just a few inches, while the biggest ones were found on the bottom of Cherbarkul Lake. A total mass of this was almost 1,400 pounds. With that being said, there were numerous craters, but it wasn't a huge crater as some meteors hit Earth. Rather, these were small ones. In fact, the largest that was measured was just 20 feet in diameter. So was Tunguska explosion shared the same faith? If it was indeed an airburst, then were there small meteorite fragments? Even though it took 19 years for the first research to take place, it's still impossible for rocks to decompose within this time frame, since this process takes millions of years to happen. It was proposed that the Tunguska explosion was caused by a comet, 
Comets are made of ice and dust or other volatiles. Don't get it wrong, comets still create huge crater, but this specific one, they assumed it was small enough that it completely vaporized in the Earth's atmosphere and left almost nothing behind. This also may support the strange glowing horizon across Europe and Asia. The dust and ice probably dispersed across the upper atmosphere and produced the bizarre colors in the sky. While this could be the closest explanation of the mysterious explosion of 1908, scientists still to this day continue to look for any possible answer.